we have left out with one lesson so we'll be covering that lesson okay from science chapter and then uh, uh, we'll do the um, social detail answers right we'll quickly okay, do the revision and then you can take up the test so now i'll present my screen um, and we'll start with the lesson can okay, you is my screen visible yes ma'am it's visible okay so the later chapter we were discussing about the structure and function of living organism uh, that is animals isn't it yes ma'am yeah are you clear with that uh, there is no doubt yeah. yeah we were discussing about different systems uh, involved in uh, human beings and then how it has been functioning how it is supporting the life of humans and all that yeah so now we'll yes, be discussing about uh, the structure function of plants okay um so here is an activity that's been given write the names of three flowering plants and non flowering plants can you name at least one one flowering plant and one non flowering plant mom rose is a flowering plant dandelions okay non flowering plants yeah. mom non flowering plants are mom i do not know the name but i no how do okay any other do you know what is that plant name mom um, i do not remember okay no problem so that is what we'll be discussing today okay how the plants and all okay how are they classified huh? i'll i'll give you more examples of non flowering plants in the later lesson okay so first we'll yes. look into the flowering plants okay uh, so you know how the structure of the plant is it right from your lower class yes. you've been looking into that so there are two systems one is the shoot system another one is the root system so i'll highlight it for you so one is the root system and the shoot system what are the two systems involved mam root system and shoot system okay so the root system it grows below the ground Isn't it? Yes, ma'am. So, what do you think is the function of a root? Ma'am, it consists of roots which absorb water and minerals from the soil. Very good. Yeah, this is the key point. Okay, uh, it its main function is to absorb water and minerals from the soil and distribute it to the uh, rest of the parts in the plant. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Can you read out the functions? Functions of the root. What are the functions of the root? Yes, ma'am. it holds the plant to the soil it absorbs water and minerals from the soil it acts as a storage organ of food materials some plants it binds the soil together so that it does not get washed away during rain or get blown away by the winds okay so can you give up some functions what ma'am yeah so you read the four points right so can you uh, summarize those Mom, it uh, doesn't let the uh, shoot system like fall on the ground. Okay. It, it, it holds soil. firmly to the soil. Then yes, one more main function is absorb the water, minerals, and distribute it to the plants. It also acts as a storage organ of food materials in some plants. Okay. so based on the root system so that this is the main function and the structure of the root system so now i said no the plants are classified based on the root system now we'll see how are they classified okay first one is the tap root system it's classified into two main types how the root system is classified it's classified into two main two main more two main mm. systems okay one is the tap root system and the other one Mama. is the fibrous root system okay So can you see the picture over here this is the tap root system can you see yes ma'am okay so can you uh, see the parts okay the the thicker part is known as the primary root okay and um, the branches like thing that is coming out of the primary root is the secondary root okay and the small hair like things that's coming out of the secondary uh, root is known as the tertiary root okay so this is how yes. the tap root system looks okay so 
a number of plants it is observed the seed germinates into a single root grows downwards to the soil and branches okay it gives rise to many lateral branches uh, from this is called as the tap root system okay so it's very simple yes, right okay yes ma'am so the some examples are given pea uh, plant mustard bean and gram okay all these are tap root they have the tap root system now we'll look into the fibrous root system fibrous root system um see uh, when a seed is germinating okay several roots uh, grow out of the same time so in tap root system we saw that as the seed is germinating one root will come out and it will give rise to many lateral roots but here as the seed is germinating many roots will emerge out at the same time okay so such yes, arrangement of root system is known as the fibrous root okay so what are the mm -hmm. examples are wheat rice grass maize all these are examples okay you can highlight that one because it might be in exam asked in your questions okay the activities will see in the later now so this is how okay uh you you can do this activity okay you can take one bee plant keep it in a wet cotton so you can see how the root is germinating you can see one um one root is coming out of the seed okay germinating okay so that is the tap root okay so one more thing is like you can take out a uh, wheat okay uh wheat and then you can so uh, keep it in a soak the uh, wet cotton and you can see observe how is the root system there okay okay so these are the activities mentioned in your book to understand make you understand more about the fibrous root system and the tap root system okay yes ma'am okay now we saw that in a function the root also acts as a storage isn't it yes ma'am now we'll see how it is acting as a storage okay so you love carrots potatoes beetroot isn't it yes ma'am those are actually roots okay it is modified in, uh, in such a way to store the food okay uh, so roots are swollen fleshy um so all the uh, nutrients that is required for the plant are stored in the root okay so that is what um we get it as sweet potato carrot and all that got yes, it okay so now yes, certain roots are modif modified uh, according to the plant's needs okay so that is called this roots modified for support now have you seen a banyan tree yes ma'am so it has something unique what is it ma'am it has um uh, it has some kind of rope yeah it, it yes you are right yeah. it consists of uh, roots hanging yeah or rope like roots that's been hanging down from the branches um these uh, what do you think is the need of these uh, roots mom why it is uh, not growing downwards last like in other plants why it is growing downwards mom they act as a pillars and prevent the long run is from winding down yeah so you know the banyan tree is like very large it it spread out yes it it branches are spreading out so in order to balance the weight okay uh, to hold the branches firmly the roots are growing downwards to held it up to the grounds okay so these roots are called as prop roots okay yes ma'am okay the next thing we'll be seeing about the parasitic roots parasitic roots are nothing but um uh it is a root arises from the stem and penetrate into the uh, stem tissue of other plant okay they take the nutrients from the other plant in order to support the host plant okay yes ma'am you got it so these are uh, in simple way uh, um method they have called as sucking roots yes ma'am got it okay so now we saw about the tap root system yes ma'am yeah i mean the root system so there were two uh, two main kinds of uh, root system what are they mam root system and root system mam no, no. root system is classified into two uh, 
मैम फाइब्रोसिस्टम सिस्टम मैम फाइब्रोसिस्टम वेरी गुड ओके सो वी सॉ फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स कैन यू गिव सम एग्जाम्पल्स फॉर टैप्रूट मैम टैप्रूट आर बीन ग्राम ओके एंड फाइब्रस रूट मैम वीट राइट ग्रास very good okay so now also we saw uh, how is the root functioning in different ways one it acts as a storage and other one it is modified to support okay and it's also yes. parasitic roots okay so these are um, modified according to the needs of the plant got it mm -hmm. now, are you clear with the root system yes ma'am now we'll move on to the shoot system okay the interesting part in the plant what we see above the ground is known as the shoot system yes ma'am okay ma so what do you see above the ground in the plant what are the uh, parts that you see mam stem mm -hmm. leaf flowers and a fruit well okay. yes so that is what we'll see one by one first we'll see the stem how was the stem uh, structured and uh, how was being uh, utilized by the plant okay the main part of the shoot system that grows upwards the um, upwards the ground uh, so that is called as the stem okay so the stem bears the leaves fruits okay uh, it, it in a irregular or regular intervals okay uh, so those are from where the leaves arises okay such places are called as nodes okay the portion between the two nodes are called as the internodes yes ma'am are you clear with nodes and internodes yes ma'am where the leaves arises in a regular interval or irregular intervals are called as nodes okay the space in between mm -hmm. each node different nodes is known as the internode okay mm -hmm. um now for example in the smaller plants that we uh, in the shrubs we call it as stem when it is in a larger uh, trees and all we call it as trunk okay the thick mm -hmm. uh, the covering um, the covering we'll see no the rough covering over the trunk is called as the bark mm -hmm. okay uh, why is the need of the bark is to protect mm -hmm. protection for this yeah protection okay protection can you read out the functions yes ma'am yes it keeps the plant straight and a uh, function of this stem it keeps the plant straight and upright it transports water and minerals absorbed by the root to all parts of the plant it holds the leaves in such a way that they obtain optimum sunlight for performing photosynthesis to manufacture food it transports food prepared by the leaves to all parts of the plant in some plants it stores food the stem of young plants when green can perform process of photosynthesis to manufacture food okay so can you simplify can you summarize what are the functions yes ma'am it keeps the plant upright and straight it transports all the uh, minerals water collected from the roots to all parts of the plants uh, it holds the leaves in such way that they obtain sunlight so that they can so that they can manufacture the food Mm. it transport food prepared by the leaves to all parts of the plant in some plants it stores food the stem of young plants when green can perform the process of photosynthesis to manufacture food of food yes so you understood about the functions how the uh, what is the, what are the functions of the stem yeah yes. so now there are two activities given okay uh, how is the the first activity like how uh, how important is the sunlight for the plant growth okay when you keep a, a potted plant facing downwards after a while okay you can see the plants of uh, the leaves are growing towards the direction of the sunlight okay yes ma'am 
it grows upwards even though the plant uh, the potted plant is downwards you can see the leaves are growing upwards that is mean towards the direction of the sunlight okay one more activity is like you can take up a twig okay keep the twig in a dipped in a colored water for two to three days okay and when you observe you can see the the color water is being transported okay so yes, you can ma conclude that the water is being supported by the uh, i mean transported by the support of the stem to the leaves okay now you got it so now we'll see how the stems are being modified okay how we saw the roots are being modified according to the various necessities of the plant like to for storage and to support or parasitic roots now we'll see how the leaves are modified in plants okay so the modifications of leaf okay yes, here the stem that stores food okay the stem that provides support the stem that manufactures food okay same like that uh, how we saw in the root the stem that stores food in some plants like ginger potato the entire stem remains under the ground okay so only the leaves and the flowering parts are above the ground so it stores it acts as a storage for the plant okay uh, as it is present below the ground it looks like root but however this uh, ginger and potato are not actually the stem they are the nodes and the inter nodes are the scaled leaves okay yes ma'am interesting isn't it uh, next yes. is uh, the stem that provides support so have you seen the tendrils i mean like a spring like thing that coming out of the uh, plants have you wondered why yes, uh, are they coming out like that yes ma'am so okay in weaker plants like for example the very good example is a pea plant okay you know the stems are very tender okay it cannot support it, the whole plant so these tendrils what will they do they'll uh, act as a support by supporting it okay they are called as the tendrils that grows from the stem uh, stem it is like a coiled structure it gives external support okay it uh, it coils itself to the nearby plant like a branches okay so that it holds the plant like how we uh, hold the money plant with a twig i mean with a twine no to to give yes, it more support same like that okay the stem that manufactures food in some plants like cactus the stem um the leaf shaped okay it's fleshy and green yeah the leaves are modified as thorns uh the stems are like thick uh, fleshy mm, to store up it manufactures actually it man because here the leaves are modified into thorns so the stem takes up the duty of preparing the food for the plant okay yes ma'am okay so here is an activity given a piece of a ginger um and uh, you have to read it carefully give reasons why it is not a root and why it is a stem yes ma'am okay so one more okay now we'll see uh, look at the leaf we saw the stem how is the leaf how are the stem uh, uh, what are the functions of the stem how are the stem being modified okay now we'll look into leaf okay so the leaf are mostly green colored it is broad flat in shape they grow up from the shoot from the point called node um there are younger and smaller leaves are found in the upper parts of the plants whereas the oldest one are looking down okay it's been located downwards as the trees as the plants grows up obviously the new leaves will become older as the uh, plant gives rise to the new ones it will be located in the upper part of the plant okay yes ma'am okay now so this is the structure of the leaf can you see uh, can you just observe and tell me where is what and all parts are located in the leaf ma'am a uh, midrib tip lamina veins petiole petiole so where is the petiole located why was okay Mom, from yes. looking at the uh, leaf structure itself you tell me what is the function of the petiole might be mam Ma uh, it is a node mam okay. so it, it attaches the leaf with the stem okay the petiole okay what is the function of the midrib
Ma'am, it supports the uh, way. Yes, yeah, please tell me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, it supports. I thought it was that it uh, half the leaf and it supports it for not yeah. getting like. Okay. Now you understood the structure of the leaf. Okay. Yes. It contains a midrib and a, a petiole that supports the leaf to the stem. Okay. And yes. the midrib which supports the veins. Okay, and there's a lamina. The lamina is an expanded flat part. Okay, the whole flat part. It's also called as a leaf blade or a lamina. Okay, the veins. It's a fine mm -hmm. network. Uh, the main function of the vein is for transportation of food materials and also the support. Okay, imagine a, a leaf without the uh, veins, it will be like clumsy. No, so these gives the structure to the leaf. Okay, yes. uh, so I'll read out the functions. You justify it. Okay, uh, you okay. summarize it for me. It prepares food uh, using carbon dioxide, water, and chlorophyll in the absence of sunlight. This process is called photosynthesis. The surface of the leaves have a tiny pores called stomata. These help in the exchange of gases during respiration. Okay, what yes, is the function of the stomata? Ma'am, uh... Stomata, it is in leaves. There are very tiny, small pores which help uh, in exchange of gases during respiration. Very good. Okay. Have you seen a people leaf? Has it shown in the first picture over here? Mom, I haven't. You haven't? Okay, fine. If you have, if you can find out this plant. Sometime you, you might not have observed, okay? If suppose you, if you could get this plant leaf, okay, put it in water, soak it in water. This is not, act, this is the activity not given in your book, but I'm telling you, okay, to observe the veins. Um, just soak one leaf in a, in a cup of water, okay? Maybe you can change the water after two to three days, okay? Uh, so soak it for 10 days. And when you take it out, okay, just with a small brush or the tooth, the old toothbrush, just wipe away all the mm, the clumsy uh, leaf uh, that comes out. I mean, the green color part, okay, that comes out. Then you can see a very nice network of the veins arranged. I had one. I missed it somewhere. Um, maybe in the... Yes, it's over here. Right. Can you see this, Jasmine? Yes, ma'am. I did this with this leaf. Okay, ma'am. It it look very nice. Maybe you can try it out. Yes, ma'am. I can see through it. Okay, I'll send a picture in WhatsApp. Okay. okay. Uh, next, we'll move on to how the leaves are modified. Okay. Um. Okay. First one is leaf spine. Uh, some plants like cactus, uh, the leaves are modified as spines. Okay, they why it is modified because you know it acts as a defense uh, organs uh, uh, defense uh, organ to protect it from the grazing animals so that they there is extensive loss of water in desert. Yeah, so to, in order to avoid that and also to protect it from the grazing animals. Okay, the next one is the pitcher plant. Leaf pitcher. Uh, in pitcher plant, the sun uh, dew plant possesses highly modified leaf to trap the insects and digest it. Okay, um, they get the nutrients uh, from these. These are called as insectivores. Insectivores plants. Okay, have yes, you seen a pitcher plant anywhere? Ma'am, I've seen in games and okay, like Venus flytrap. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. The next one is leaf tendrils. How we saw the uh tendrils in stem. Okay. And some uh, can you see? There's a beautiful picture of the flower, Gloriosa. It's highly mm -hmm. coiled. They help the plant to climb. Okay. Okay, ma'am. So the main function of this is to help the plant climb. Okay. Next is the leaf modified as a reproductive organ. In some plants like bryophyllum, uh, the buds that produces, okay, the leaf, 
from where the buds we already saw this in the modes of reproduction yeah in the previous lesson i guess okay yes, so now we understood yes ma'am okay uh, the meeting will end in 10 minutes i'll be sending you one more link you can join from that link okay okay ma'am okay so we'll complete uh, this one the flowers okay we saw root okay what are the two main systems in the root mom uh, tap root and fibrous root okay now we know how the uh, leaves are i mean the roots are modified then we saw the stem um, then what are the functions of the stem how the uh, stems are modified then we saw the leaf how the leaves are modified how is the structure of the leaf okay now we'll see flower okay um okay. you know the colorful and attractive part of the plant is flower it is in different shapes colors and smell yeah the fragrance um mm -hmm. now we'll see the parts of the plant okay so the green color part that you see here no that holds the flower okay so that is mm -hmm. called as the sepal okay, okay so the main function of the sepal is to protect the uh bud before it blooms Okay, it will be very tender, no, the petals, in order to protect that, the sepals will be closed, okay. You understood? Mom, yes. Like in summer, is the rose, it is like this, and the bud is inside, and when winters come, it blossoms. Yes, very good. That's okay now we'll see the petals okay the second ring this is the first ring the outermost ring okay this is the second ring with the brightly colored center like how we told about the rose no when it blooms it look very bright these are uh, attract the uh, why the leaves are being i mean the petals are very much colored mom uh, mom yes mom they help in pollination, pollination very good they help in pollination only because the insects plays a major role in pollination yeah so in order to attract the insects the the leaf petals are brightly colored okay next we'll see about the stamens okay mm, these are the third ring the first ring is the sepal the second ring is the petal the third ring is the stamens okay the stamens are the male part okay male part of the flower uh it has a bag like structure called anther can you see on the top it's like over here yeah yes this bag like structure called anther and it will a uh, tube like structure can you see the tube that holds it to the plant is called as the filament okay the anther yes, the anther contains uh pollen grains in inside it okay Yes, ma'am. So there are two parts. One is the anther and the filament. Okay, the filament holds the anther to the plant, uh, flower. Okay, the anther yes, inside the anther, it is like a bag-like structure inside which the pollen grains are located. Okay. Yes. Next, we'll see about the carpel, carpels or pistils. Okay. Um, these form the fourth ring. This is the female part. Okay. First yes, is the stamen. Next is the petal. Then the Mom, pistil carpel. No, what is the third one? What is the third one? Mom, third ring. Stamens, Mom's then the carpel yes. or pistil. Okay. Um, female part. Can you see this? Mm. Yeah, over here. Yes, ma'am. One minute. I'll change the color. This. Yeah. The style in the middle, the ovary at the base. The ovaries at the base. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. The stigma receives the pollen grains which germinate first. The when an insect comes, okay, it drops the pollen grains mm -hmm. over here. It's been transported through the filament. It reaches the ovule. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Ovule inside which the fertilization occurs and it grows into an Ovule, the ovary bears some ball like structure called ovules. The so pollen grains fuse with the ovules and then the seeds are formed. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now is the pedicel. 
pedicel uh, it is a small stalk um, this is the last end part of the flower okay the it it supports the flower to the plant and putting it yes, in a proper position okay the functions of the the functions of the flower i'll summarize it for you okay the it is a main organ of reproduction in the plant okay uh it is grown in uh, different plants like uh, for a decorative purpose okay interior or out uh, exterior um it provides for the it has been used for perfumes and scents production for example jasmine lavender rose okay cloves uh, it is used as a spice in food then uh, and some parts of the dried plant uh, the uh, plants i mean few flowers are used as a medicinal purpose also okay yes ma'am you understood yes ma'am next the seed okay the seed you know it is the hardest part of the uh, plant uh, it stores yeah. the food for its growth uh when it finds a moist soil it germinates and gives rise to a new plant called as the seedling okay from which the new yes. plant arises yes ma'am okay so now next we see up yes ma'am it has also given stage of germination yes very good i missed out this point you can click confirm okay next is the fruit okay after pollination and fertilization uh the ovary grows into a fruit okay so now we saw no when the pollen grain fuses with the ovule it forms into a seed and then okay uh pollination and fertilization the ovary grows into a fruit a fruit is defined as a mature and ripened ovary so what is a fruit called mam mam ovary ah ripened ovary A fruit is nothing but a mature or ripened ovary. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So, what is the function of a fruit? Can you read that? Yes, ma'am. It protects the seed against injury and other in unfavorable climatic conditions. It helps in the dispersal of seeds. Uh, it stores food material, as in the case of tomato, apple, and mango. fruits are edible part of the plant mam yes mam is a any plant that is very small uh, but i can find it in my place so that i want to grow a plant okay you want to grow a plant in your house yes mam okay i'll tell you uh, you get some coriander uh, seeds okay coriander okay. seeds you know how a coriander seed looks maybe when your mama papa when they go for market okay you can just tell them to get little thing okay and then soak it in water for overnight and then take it out okay. uh, have a, uh, you have old um, i mean a plastic uh, uh, tub or something that's been not used yes, or you can get um, um, uh there's a bag okay uh, i'll tell you i'll send you the link to where to buy that bag okay uh, for especially to grow the plants you can take that in case you can take any old uh, plastic uh, bucket or something okay and then put some okay. soil and then uh, you have that coir no i mean uh, the coconut husk yes ma'am you soak it okay you soak it for 2 uh, to 3 days in water you soak it in uh, water for 2 to 3 days and uh, okay and then you can take it out and put it over there if you don't okay, get any fertilizer if you have any fertilizer i mean uh, manure okay organic manure if you don't get it in that case you can use this coir it's very good it has many nutrients in it um